welcome to chapter 18 on electric charge and electric field. In this first section of chapter 18, we're going to look specifically at electric charge. And for this, we're going to begin by looking at a simulation involving a balloon being rubbed on a sweater. Opening the simulation, you see a wall with both uh, positive and negative charges, a balloon with positive negative charges, and a sweater with positive negative charges. And you see that everything is balanced. And if I bring the balloon over towards the sweater, notice that it collected some of the negatives off of the sweater so that now it was attracted. I'm going to reset really quick. If I bring the balloon over to the wall, it stays there, but you don't see anything happening. So back over to the sweater. I'm going to remove all of the negative charges from the sweater. So now the sweater has a positive charge and the balloon has a negative net charge. But all of the charge that was originally on the sweater is now on the balloon and we haven't lost or gained any charges overall. We've just moved them from item to item. If I release the balloon, it goes over to the sweater because opposite charges attract and likes repel. But now when I bring the balloon over to the wall, we see that the negative charges in the wall move, whereas the positive charges stay put. Why does this happen? This is actually an induced attraction. And what you're seeing is that the negative charges in the balloon are repelling the negative charges in the wall, pushing them to the side, leaving the wall to look like it has a positive charge in that. Notice the wall is still overall negative. We haven't taken any charges from the wall. We haven't added any to them. Um, all we're seeing is that the charges are moving around. And notice in both cases, with the sweater and the balloon and the wall here, the thing that is moving, the thing that we can shift around is the negative charges. And why is this? Well, remember the atom. In the atom, we have the nucleus that is positively charged, and we have the electrons that are somewhere around the nucleus. Oftentimes we say, them, say that it's orbiting, but we now know that that's not quite the best word to use. The, the positive charges are stuck. They're much more massive and they're all clumped together in that nucleus. They, they, they're stuck. They can't really do anything. But the electrons are a little bit here, a little bit there. They're more free to move and therefore the electrons are the ones that, that shift around. If in this simulation I were able to move the sweater towards the wall, we would see the electrons in the wall shift toward the sweater because they would again be attracted. Okay. So returning to the lecture as a whole, um, so summarizing, what happens if I bring two positively charged objects towards each other. Well, opposites attract, likes repel. Since they're both positive, they will repel. Same thing for the two negatively charges. Since they are both negative, they will repel. If a negative charge is brought near a positive or vice versa, then um, you get attraction. And interestingly, as we saw with the wall, if you bring a charged object near a neutral object, you get an induced attraction. So neutral objects are attracted to charged objects. As we saw in the simulation, the total amount of charge is constant. We didn't gain electrons. We just moved them from the sweater to the balloon. But the total number was was constant. We cannot create charge, we cannot destroy it. This concludes the first section of chapter 18. In the next section, we're going to be looking at the atom.